certainly one of the happiest parts of my job is when we have the wonderful people from the world of basketball come to visit us here in Springfield and get to have these conversations. I'm especially happy, and, and we have a week with such difficult news and challenging times right now to have a really good guy here be with me and a wonderful story to tell. So I'm so happy you could join us on this Sunday. Thanks for coming in. Let me tell you a little bit about our special guest. Our special guest today combined a successful NBA playing career with the most inspiring career off the board. Following an outstanding high school career in his hometown of Rome, Georgia, Mr. Glenn went on to a celebrated college career at Southern Illinois University. Drafted in the first time by the Chicago Bulls, Mr. Glenn overcame tremendous obstacles following a potentially career ending injury in an automobile accident to achieve a 10 year career in the NBA with the Buffalo Braves, New York Knicks, Atlanta Hawks, and Milwaukee Bucks. An outstanding shooter, Mr. Glenn was nicknamed Stinger by his teammates to his remarkable accuracy of his mid range jump shot. He averaged over 54% from the floor, which is a remarkable shot for a jump shooter. Mr. Glenn's life off the court has always been extraordinary. In 1981, he was awarded the J. Walter Kennedy Citizenship Award for Community Service, and for years, he's run the Mike Glenn All-Star Basketball Camp for the Hearing and Hitting, the nation's first basketball camp for hearing challenged athletes. The camp is run free of charge to as many as 120 athletes from across the country. He's also collected an extraordinary library of artifacts and periodicals tied to the African American experience. He's also continued his connection to basketball by working for the Orlando Hawks as a color commentator, Fox Sports South, for many, many years. But perhaps the most amazing statistic is the fact that he never missed a day of school. Perfect attendance for elementary, middle school, and high school, while both being an honor student and a number one ranked basketball player in the state. Please join in a great round of applause for our special guest, Mr. Mike. I'm so happy to be here, Paul, happy to be here with you again. One of my favorite places in the world is to be here in the Basketball Hall of Fame. I feel so much at home. Thanks for having me. Well, welcome home. It's a joy to have you back with us today. Yes. To Rome, Georgia. What was life like as a child growing up in Rome, Georgia? Well, thanks, Paul. I had a very unique kind of upbringing right. because my dad was a basketball coach at Georgia School for the Deaf. And I can remember my first time going to a practice with my dad. I was about seven or eight years old. It was a small gym, and dad coached a high school girls and boys basketball team. And when I walked into the gym, the girls on his team, they started running up to me, Paul, picking me up, and kissing me on the jaw. <laughs> now, you know when you're seven or eight, you don't know how to appreciate those kisses. <laughs> like you can later on in your life. So I started to yell, Dad, help me! These girls are attacking me out here. And they're not even saying anything. But Dad explained to me, he said, Mike, these girls are deaf. He says, that means they can't hear or talk to you. He said, they want to, to be your friend. And he said, if you want to be their friend, you're going to have to learn some sign language. So, Paul, I made a decision at seven years old, I would learn sign language, and the girls just adopted me into their culture, and it was a destiny-defining moment for me. I learned to play basketball from deaf kids, I, I learned the deaf culture, and uh, as you mentioned, I went on to be the number one player in the state of Georgia by playing with deaf kids and hearing kids, and uh, also to start my camp, which is one, one of the joys and pleasures of my life to start a basketball camp just for deaf kids because they could never go to a camp, so I had to start one for them. Absolutely. Well, that's fascinating. There's, we'll get to a lot more background about the camp, obviously. But your dad, how did he come to this remarkable job? Because well, there, there couldn't have been a whole lot of basketball coaches even for, for deaf kids at that point. Well, thanks. You're, you're very right. Uh, dad was a World War II uh, veteran, and he had majored in mathematics uh, when he was in college. And there was a job opening at Georgia School for the Deaf. At that time, they didn't even have a sports program. Hmm. So dad went there, and he kind of learned sign language, kind of on the job, learned sign language. And he had played basketball in high school. And he said, we need to start a sports program. So dad, uh, back in 1951, started the first program for sports at Georgia School for the Deaf. And uh, Paul, he coached every sport that they had. And uh, every year they didn't have any budget at that time. Deaf schools were very much there. It was just segregated and put in a corner. And, and 
And uh, so he just did it because he loved it. Mm -hmm. And every year at the end of the year, the principal, Mr. Purdue, would say, Coach Manny did a good job. So that was all the pay Dad got for 20 years of coaching. My goodness. But uh, he said, you can bring your son to the games if you want to. <laughs> so that was just a pleasure and a treasure for me. And it, and it certainly turned out well. So through uh, his love of sports and love of helping people was where my NBA career was born. Sure. I should point out, folks, that if you have questions for Mr. Glenn, please start to get them in your hand. We'll come around and collect them from you in a little bit. We'd love to involve you in the conversation as well. Did you play other sports besides basketball? I did. I loved baseball as, as a young man. I loved that even more than basketball. You know, it was very popular in the neighborhood, and all the men and all the families listened to the radio, to the games. And of course, Dad, growing up in Alabama, of course, you know, the Georgia, he was a big Willie Mays and Hank Aaron fan because they were both from Alabama. So, and the Braves, of course, were in Atlanta at that time. So I was a very good baseball player. I thought about playing both in college. Even had a couple of teams look at me in high school. But uh, I went to Southern Illinois and I actually talked to the coach who knew of uh, my baseball career too. A uh, very good team at that time. They were always in the top 10. And, and I was majoring in mathematics. And uh, when basketball season ended, they'd already played about 15 or 20 games. So I decided I think I'd better just stick to my studies and to my basketball. <laughs> High school career, and I want to jump past that before we get to Southern Illinois. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you were the number one ranked basketball player in the state of Georgia. What was it about your high school career that was it your dad's teaching, your high school coach? What was it that, you know, your hard work on your part, obviously, mm -hmm. that got you at that point, that kind of recognition at such a young age? Well, thanks. And again, I'll go back to the teaching at the deaf, at the deaf school first. His students, I remember dad had this one girl named Mildred Nelson. She wore number 12. I'll never forget her. And she was a, the best player in the history of a Georgia school for the deaf. She was such a terrific shooter. And Paul, she was my first hero. I looked up to Mildred, and Mildred was knocking down those jump shots, and how the clap for Mildred, and I always wanted Mildred to do well. And I remember one time, Dad let me go to a road game when I was really young, and I got a chance to sit beside Mildred. So here I was sitting beside my hero, my beautiful hero, and I was the happiest little boy on the planet. <laughs> I mean, my feet wouldn't even hit the floor, but I was sitting beside Mildred, so. <laughs> sounds like you were spinning. Yes, I was very much spinning. Absolutely. And uh, so I was practicing twice always, with hearing kids and deaf kids. And I had a very good high school coach. Uh, we worked really hard. I got really introduced to hard work uh, when I went to high school, running miles and running bleachers and things that I really hadn't done. So he raised up that part of my game. I always was a terrific shooter, because when you're a little kid, you have to kind of go to the corner or wherever you can get and learn how to catch and shoot quickly. So I did that with bigger kids, but I, I put together the other parts of my game, and uh, we went all the way to the state finals. And so uh, he was very instrumental, too, at the high school that I went to. So living in both worlds really gave me an opportunity to be the number one player the state of Georgia. And, and what was the key to take you into Southern Illinois? There were a lot of wonderful colleges in Georgia and around. What took you so far away from home? Yes, um, I was an excellent student. I finished third in my class and I had scholarship academic as well as baseball, basketball, kind of scholarships and visit all the colleges in North Carolina, Duke, Clemson, Georgia, Alabama, all those places. And, but when I went to Southern Illinois, I really loved the campus, I loved the coach, I love the opportunity to do something special. I knew one of my heroes, Walt Frazier, had gone there, had also come from Georgia, not too far from me, and uh, had done such a wonderful job at Southern Illinois that after, it was the last college that I visited. And I was kind of back in ACC, but I visited uh, Southern Illinois and I really loved it. And I said to myself, this is a college that I could go to and enjoy whether I make it to the NBA or not. So, so my job, my, I saw it as to go to college, get a degree, enjoy your four-year experience, and I thought that was the best opportunity.